So my former business partner and I really got into blockchain full-time focused on it in 2017. I've been following it for many years and actually first encountered it when I was an undergrad at Stanford back in 2013, 2014. But it was in 2017 that crypto was growing massively. I mean, it, it, it was nothing compared to what it is today. But at the time we thought, oh my gosh, the market cap of Ethereum, you know, is skyrocketing. There's huge opportunities here. And specifically, the first major product that my company launched in crypto, which we saw as the great startup opportunity, is a product called True USD, which is a US dollar backed stable coin with now over a billion dollars in circulation. And we just saw it as if, if folks listening are familiar with Tether, you know, there is a, there's a currency called Tether. It was growing very quickly. It's this fiat backed stable coin but it really hadn't built a great product and hadn't built a lot of trust with its users. And so we just saw a huge opportunity where we said, look, they've already proven out the market that there's a tremendous demand for this product. We just need to build a high quality version of it, really earn trust with users, build something that people are gonna trust and love, and that could easily grow to a billion dollars or more. And that proved to be true. So that was our first major product in crypto, true USD has been very successful. And then a lot of the stuff that we've done since then, such as TrueFi, have really built upon that success. That's, that's amazing. What in, how, one, or uh, two questions. What, how do you build trust within your product and in your coin in particular? And then two, how do you build a high quality product? What goes into building you know, a higher quality currency? So it's different for every company. Our company is very focused on trust. That's why it's literally called Trust Tokens. <laughs> and our, our two major products, uh, we've got True Five, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit, and then True USD, which is our first major product. So a lot of trust and true <laughs> in our product. And part of that is because, you know, our company is a bit different than a lot of other crypto companies. And I know you've had many crypto and blockchain companies on the podcast before, but you know, some crypto projects are pure technical. Like they say, hey, we're going to make the bleakest, fastest L1 blockchain that has ever existed with some crazy technical innovation. And you could be a pure tech team and get a project like that done. And I love that. I'm glad there are teams like that. And I think that that's actually probably the majority of the work in crypto is that kind of very highly technical stuff, which is great. What our company focuses on is somewhat different. We've always had part, as part of our DNA, being this bridge between TradFi and DeFi, traditional finance and decentralized finance. And we found that there are very few folks that really know how to play at that intersection. And it's a place where we can differentiate ourselves. So for USD, the fiat back stable coin, it's a perfect example of that because you can't build a fiat backed stable coin with a pure tech product. You need to actually work with banking partners. You need to have a know your customer policies in place so you can comply with regulation. You have to accept, accept millions of dollars of bank wires. There's all kinds of things that you have to do to interface with traditional finance and with the traditional legal system to make a product like that work. Well, also, having very solid technicals such that your stable coin can get integrated into DeFi protocols and exchanges and all kinds of other places. So it's really about being that bridge and creating that trust because some of these things like a fiat backed stable coin are difficult to make completely decentralized. So how do we avoid being like some of these other products like Tether that have had some issues with trust in the marketplace? How do we build something that is super transparent, super trustworthy, that users know, hey, even though this may have some centralized component to how it works, that's inevitable, but we still completely can rely on it as users. That's awesome. I love this concept that, or the, the part that you build TrueFi with this, this idea about lending. I'm curious about, because it's an uncollateralized, uncollateralized lending platform, how, how do you lend without collateral? I, I was talking to another founder, just a, a little anecdote. And they had created a lending platform 
where they would stake their either uh, NFT or I think there was one company that did like a physical Rolex at a location that then minted an NFT and then they staked that to then lend. How do you do it without collateral? Yeah. So, and Julian, can I actually project my screen since we did yeah. this video? Go ahead. It might be interesting folks to just some of this stuff. Yeah. Cool. So there have been several waves of innovation in DeFi. And one of the first one was with over collateralized lending protocols. So can you see my screen? All right. Yep. So, you know, one of the, one of the most famous over collateralized lending protocols and a protocol that really pioneered what DeFi is today is a protocol called Compound that I think many folks have heard about, which where it's a protocol, it's a smart contract running on the Ethereum blockchain mm -hmm. where you can do over collateralized lending. So you can put up a dollar and 50 cents of Ethereum with a smart contract and then borrow a dollar of stable coin, or you can put up a dollar 50 cents of stable coin and borrow a dollar of Ethereum. You always have to put up more collateral than you're borrowing. And that's what keeps the system safe. If you don't pay back that loan, they can always liquidate your collateral. Does that make sense? Right. Yep. So that was kind of part of the first wave of DeFi protocols that came out. Compound, there's another one called Aave. It's pretty large. It's got about 10 billion of liquidity in it right now. It's a very significant protocol. There's another one called Maker. And so these are all major DeFi protocols, really, you know, first wave, V1 of how lending works in DeFi. Now, it's a cool system, but this kind of over collateralized lending is only a very limited market. And if you look at the entire world of lending and how it's evolved over actually millennia, because lending is one of the oldest forms of finance, even before equity and lots of other things were invented, this kind of over collateralized lending is just a very, very small market within all of lending. And the vast majority of lending doesn't just take into account collateral, it also takes into account the credit of a borrower. And that is sort of the second wave of DeFi lending protocol that our company and TrueFi really helped to pioneer and define. So the idea there is that a protocol like TrueFi, you can put capital in and there are portfolio managers who are experts in different areas and they actually lend that capital out sometimes taking some collateral, sometimes taking no collateral, but none of the lending that happens on TrueFi is over collateralized. The way that Compound and Aave are over collateralized, it really does rely on high quality underwritings to make sure that most or all borrowers are going to be paying back those loans and that the lenders who are putting their capital at risk are ultimately going to achieve a good risk adjusted return. So if I can actually just show you briefly how that yeah. works. So this is our site, app.foofi.io. I hope everyone who's listening can go play around with this later and get a sense of it for yourself. So this is the first and still one of the largest uncollateralized lending protocols in DeFi. We launched it about two years ago in November of 2020 at a time when uncollateralized lending on the blockchain seemed like a crazy idea. Now yeah. it is very well accepted. It's very quickly growing. It's one of the most exciting, hottest areas of DeFi. And we think it's really going to push DeFi forward. In the last two years, as you can see here, we originated just over $1.7 billion of luck. So this has been a very successful model. With that being said, this is still a startup. These are still early days. Our ambition was not just to get to 1 billion. We want to get to 10 billion. We want to get to 100 billion. We eventually want to get to a trillion dollars because the global lending market really is that large. And we think that this technology is a fundamentally better way to do lending. And so we think that a generalized lending protocol, like what we have with TrueSign, mm -hmm. unlike some of the more niche over collateralized lending protocols like Compound and Ave and Maker, a generalized lending protocol like TrueFi that can take into account credit and collateral can really address the entire global lending market, or at least a very large fraction of it, and make all of it more transparent, more open, and more efficient. So that's ultimately where we're going. We've got a very good start. We've got several years of lending under our belt. Very, very strong track record and good results so far. But hopefully 
several orders of magnitude of growth ahead of us in the coming years as we go from just, you know, a cool, exciting, fast growing product to truly changing how finance works at a global scale. That's incredible. How, how does credit work? You, you describe, you know, credit score as a main function, credit score and collateral, really giving you the ability to borrow from, you know, the, the lenders that are on the platform. How does that work? How is that calculated? And what are the benefits of having now a credit score on, on the on chain? And does it communicate with your score off chain? Good question. Okay. So the way that credit works in the true five protocol and in most other uncollateralized lending protocols these days is you've got portfolio managers who are experts in a certain area mm -hmm. and they do all the underwriting for loans in that area. And it's a tricky problem because there's so many different areas of lending. We get the experts in all of them. We have a platform and we bring on folks that are experts in these different areas. So a couple of examples. Here is a portfolio that recently launched with this group called Chorus that does lending with financial technology companies, fintech companies in emerging markets. And they really know emerging market lending and emerging market fintech. And so they are very well qualified to deploy capital in that area. You know, there's many other types of portfolios with different strategies. We have a portfolio that's actually in partnership with another crypto protocol called the Woo that lends to folks in the Woo ecosystem. We've got portfolios, some of our largest portfolios that lend to crypto funds, crypto market makers, folks like Wintermute, Nibio, Alameda Research, and so on. And we also have portfolios that actually just have one borrower and where you can just deploy capital with a single borrower that you may have a very strong brand name that people really want to work with. And so here's an example of one of those. This is a seven and a half million dollar portfolio that is exclusively lending to Alameda Research. And mm -hmm. so and we really have a variety of different opportunities that where you can deploy capital on Fruify. And our goal is to you know, provide high quality infrastructure, a high quality platform that can support a whole variety of different things that lenders may want to deploy capital into. That, yeah, that's that, really our model. Yeah, I know that that's incredible. And, and uh, back, back to the, the credit score question, how is, are the underwriters then evaluating your company and your ability to, to borrow and then giving you a score? And does that score build over time based on your, you know, your, your repayments on that initial principal, or is it kind of net zero? And then starts to build up at any given time. I'm curious about how that initial score is, is developed. It is it mere additional finance or is it something that's slightly different? Good question. So a lot of those things do mirror traditional finance mm -hmm. in that, you know, people will be building up a larger and larger credit record and credit score over time, be able to borrow more capital with more flexible terms. But the big difference with traditional finance is how much more transparent it is. And if you look at part of what's happening recently in crypto, we've had some major implosion. Companies like Celsius, like Three Arrows that have either defaulted or are not able to repay customer funds and are going through some significant issues. You know, part of the issue there is that users who, users or businesses who were lending capital to some of these firms, they didn't have transparency about what risks those firms were taking with the capital that users were provided. And, you know, there's, every lending business is going to have some risk, right? There's no such thing as lending or investing without having a risk of losing some or all their capital. But part of the point of DeFi is, hey, we can do finance in a way that is much more transparent about what those risks are. So let me just show you as an example. With Foofi, just like with many DeFi protocols, it's completely transparent. You can see every single loan that has ever been made by the oh. Foofi protocol, all $1.7 billion. You can see all the terms of those loans since the protocol was founded two years ago. So here's the actual analytics page, app.trufi.io slash loan. You can go check this out yourself. And all this data is public on the Ethereum blockchain. So you don't really have to trust me. You don't have to trust our website. This is completely transparent. 
you can see we've got a bunch of nodes that are active right now. And, and you can just scroll through here and just see.